All right, the contract details for Brock Wright have been released, and I was not anticipating that it was going to be this high of an amount uh, for the tight end, too, that would be coming into play behind George Kittle. Shout out to David Lombardi. I would not have seen this if he did not retweet it. But it's, this information is actually directly from a Lions reporter, Dave Burkett, and he is reporting that tight end Brock Wright has signed a three-year, $12 million restricted free agent offer that the 49ers have made. And obviously, as we've already discussed, the Lions have five days to match this deal. And will they? The 6'5", 250-pound tight end, uh, who is a former undrafted free agent out of Notre Dame could very well likely be a San Francisco 49er. Again, he's 25 years old. He has seven touchdowns over the last three years. I wouldn't consider him a burner by any stretch of the imagination, but he's crafty. He's a good blocker. He can get open, and he'll catch the ball when you throw it to him. Uh, so this is interesting because based on that value, and you look at the value that that was presented to Charlie Warner, who signed with the Atlanta Falcons, he also signed a three-year, $12 million deal. I believe eight and change was guaranteed. It was actually one of the more surprising deals um, for free agency from my perspective for the simple fact of I didn't think that another team was willing to pay uh, a guy of that caliber who only had 11 receptions over four years. Now, I'm also... Uh, one of the guys who will always tell you how important Charlie Warner was as a blocker and what he meant to the scheme. So I'm not surprised by that. He is a very talented blocker. He's one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL, actually, which is why he got paid. But it is interesting to see how the 49ers pivot and they go and offer him. Uh, him is Brock Wright. That is three years, $12 million, and it's signed. So now... We just have to wait and see. And to be honest with you, if I had to give you my opinion on this, I don't see the lines matching that. Why would they? I, they had him at a value. I think they were about to pay him $3 million, uh, which was the offer sheet that they originally had signed uh, as an original, original round tender to RFA. So... I would say he's ours. I, I was expect. I didn't know what the contract details were, so it was hard for me to say. Like, I don't know if the Lions are going to match. I would, if I was a betting man, I would bet that the Lions aren't going to match. Three years, twelve million. They got Sam Laporta. They have two other tight ends already on the roster, and obviously they can turn to the drafts for more depth as well. So, uh, this sounds like he's going to be a Niner. So interesting i think that's a good thing but i think it's also interesting to know what does that mean for the other guys that are on the roster now we understand george kittle is the guy and that is not up for debate it's not up for question he's him um the debate and the questions came from latu and willis and what they are going to present and do uh for this team obviously latu um has been the biggest disappointment out of the two had a really rough training camp. The 49ers put him on IR, effectively redshirting him for the year. And um, I don't know. I don't know if um, this is the nail in the coffin for Latu, potentially. Um, I mean, the uphill battle is was already there. Uh, but now this, this presents as Latu could be the odd man out in this situation because I have heard good things about Braden Willis and how they feel about him internally. So I do think that Braden Willis, and I think Braden Willis has the upside. I think we even saw that from training camp last year as well. We saw some glimpses of him as a blocker, as a receiver, and being able to do a bunch of different things. So Braden Willis, as a seventh-round draft pick, still has a ton of upside. So I don't think his job is necessarily in danger. This feels like a direct impact on obviously having to replace Charlie Warner, but Cameron Latu, I mean, he was drafted in the third round. I get it was a late round third comp pick, basically a fourth 
but um, I feel like at the time, I'll speak for myself. I felt like it was a reach. Um, he he definitely felt like a prospect that would have been available in the fifth round um, if they would have waited where they took uh, Daryl Luter Jr. Um, he, he so listen, but that doesn't mean it is the end for Latu. It just means I think Latu has a lot to prove next training camp when uh, when he shows up because this is this is big, man. Like uh, that's that's decent money. I'm trying to think of tight end twos that the 49ers have paid in recent memory. And I'm not sure because Charlie Warner was a former six round pick. So I've been getting value there. Ross Welly, who has been on the roster since I think 2019. Um, he was an undrafted free agent and they just kind of been signing into low key one year deals. When they brought in Tyler Croft, Croft was signed to a very cost effective deal. Um, this is, this, I think, uh, I'm trying to even go back to Levine Toilolo. I'm going back to uh, Garrett Selleck. I don't have Garrett Selleck's contract figures in front of me, but I'm not sure it was at this level. I could be wrong um, on that particular uh, point, but I'm just thinking in recent memory, like at least within the last four years, uh, they have not put this value into at least a contract figure amount into a tight end two. So we do know the importance of the tight end two. That's why for me, I was pretty bummed that Charlie Warner wasn't returning because I really did feel he was one of the better blocking tight ends uh, in the NFL and what had an immense role on the 49ers offense, especially if Kittle ever had to take a break or he got or her like the run game didn't suffer all that much. Warner was able to come in and pretty much duplicate whatever whatever Kittle was able to do. And Kittle's one of the be the best blocking tight end in the NFL, which again is why I was I was like I wasn't I want to say I was upset that Warner signed. So I was very happy for him. Um, but I was bummed because I'm like. Are we who Latu and Willis? Like again, Willis has upside. Latu's a big question, but I don't feel comfortable with either of those two right now as it stands. And, and that could change when training camp comes around. But as it stands right now, it's like, oh, I'm not comfortable uh, with our tight end two spot because I know how imperative it is uh, to this. You know, any outside zone. Um, you know, the tight ends are are like almost damn near the point of attack. So. Um, that's why Kittle's so important. That's why Charlie Warner was so important. That's why Kyle Juszczyk is so important. Those three guys are at the point of attack uh, in the run game more often than not. So this sounds like we got a tight end too. I don't know. I like it. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.